my name is Catherine Kennedy, and I've had the honor of um, curating and collaborating on this show with Alison Chapman Andrews, and I'd just like to share a few words about the experience. One big painting commemorates many things. Just as we see variations on the physical and the social landscape through Alison Chapman Andrews' artwork, we are also seeing recent landmarks, such as the artist's 80th birthday, 60 years of artistic production, 56 years of Barbados' independence, and recently our first anniversary as a republic. Milestones shared by Alison and the island that she cherishes and calls home. My personal experience as a curator has never been a linear journey. It came about organically through my experience as a practicing artist and a deep care for my fellow creatives, and has moved just as fluidly to adapt and honor each show I've had the opportunity to be involved in. One Big Painting is no exception. The exhibition, first conceptualized as a virtual show with an accompanying catalog and later expanded to include the physical manifestation that you see today, has been lovingly crafted through Alison's own eyes, taking ownership in the framing and the contextualization of her legacy. It was humbling to be asked to work with her to co-curate this final product, to facilitate, coordinate, and support the artist's vision and the celebration of a lifetime dedicated to culture and art. My task was not to offer a framework, but to collaborate. As someone who understands the privilege I've been afforded in being given an inside look into all that surrounds a project of this magnitude. In this retrospective, Alison has identified main themes or motifs that have inspired her creations. The royal palm and the gully, heightened color, the high eye level, high eye level the falling leaf, palm fruits transformed and the moon, related shapes, patterning, portraiture, and nudes. On the gallery walls and in the catalog, you can read her statements for each section and see not only her inspiration, but also draw linkages between them, understand the way her process and her subject matter work in tandem, whether she's capturing a landscape, the core of a person, or even melding the two with allusions to womanhood or masculinity interlaced with nature. I, as probably everyone in this room, have known Alison's work for many years. I've identified with the familiar images of Barbados' landscape and been fascinated and consumed by the striking colors, textures, shapes that intensify the view, subconsciously transforming how we see our own home. Something interesting that Alison has pointed out, however, is that despite the familiarity of so many of these scenes, they are usually composites, drawing on multiple angles, eye levels, even scenery that does not necessarily exist in reality. We know these places, but as she states in her text, we cannot visit them. Many of us had probably either said or heard at some point that Barbados is not a real place. Usually this is said in jest, but the phrase is nevertheless quite loaded in terms of the image of our island, often presented as a paradise that is marketed for others, made inaccessible through an unattainable portrayal of paradise. Alison Chapman Andrews, works, her works in some way can conjure this paradise in their incredible beauty, yet she cleverly subverts and challenges it. We may technically not be able to visit these places, but they are anything but inaccessible to us. They can be universally appreciated and admired, but to those intimately familiar with Barbados, they stimulate a different kind of fantasy one that does not alienate its population, or make it seem that this place is not for us, but on the contrary, resonates and connects with us, venerating the island in a way that allows us to see it in another light. This sense of connection or community also comes through in Alison's portraits, divided in this show to mainly show por portrayals of artists and of one of her muses and close friends, Kathleen. The artist's powerful presence can be felt not only in her paintings, but also in these relationships. We see it in her renderings of artists like Stanley Graves, the late Pat Byers, Ras Akem Ramsey, and Ras Ilex, each piece speaking to their essence in unique ways. It was also Alison's fabulous idea to include two sculptures from her own substantial personal collection created by Ras Ilex, and which he can even be seen carving in the piece on the wall. A further example of her love of Barbados, its culture and its artists, literally leaping from the canvas and into her daily life. The two portraits we see of Kathleen are two of many. The first one painted in 2014, the last painted in 2022. 
The notion of first and last continues to be present in her, her pieces, Pitt Stream, County Durham, Allison's first landscape done of the English countryside in 1969, and the centrality of things, her most recent landscape. This timeline of her artistic contribution is reinforced by the inclusion of a small sample of her sketchbooks, meticulously labeled records of her practice spanning from 1964, seven years before her migration to Barbados in 1971, and all the way through to present day. In a shift from this traditional means of documentation through sketchbooks, there is also a stunning printed to catalog designed by William Cummins available for purchase here tonight. And we have had the opportunity through technology to have a virtual iteration of this show, a preview of which you can be, can be seen on the screen in the gallery. This can also be browsed at your leisure on the NCF's website. The layout and content, and content online differs a bit, showcasing over 50 of Allison's works and allowing yet another vantage point from which to appreciate the artwork. One which will live on the NCS website permanently to be visited and revisited. This acts as an accompaniment, an archive, and an enduring example of the artist's legacy, hoping to broaden access to and knowledge of these critical works for many generations to come. We have had the honor of experiencing and re-experiencing Barbados through the gaze of Alison Chapman Andrews over the epic trajectory of her career, as the colors and forms she has mastered and adapted have filled our cultural space with literal and figurative foliage and light forms. I cannot express my gratitude to Alison enough for enriching each of our lives with her decades of work and being an icon of perseverance and excellence. We could not be happier to be celebrating her here tonight. I would like to give thanks as well to the National Cultural Foundation and the Queen's Park Gallery, particularly the CEO, Mrs. Carol, Carol Roberts Reefer, for her leadership, Andrea Wells and Onika Small for their unwavering support, Jackie Batson for being a wizard with the gallery's hanging system, among other things, and all of the dedicated gallery attendants, especially Ajani Wells and Carol George, who have been on duty with me throughout this week and really given their all to this process. Huge thanks to Dr. Alison Thompson for being our featured speaker this evening. I hope many of you will be able to join us again next week, where she and another sensational Barbadian artist, Ras Akem Ramsey, will be in conversation conversation with Alison Chapman Andrews about her work for a roundtable discussion. Mark your calendars for Saturday, April 22nd, 6 to 8 p.m. Finally, thank you to each of you for being here tonight to attend this opening. To all of Alison's friends and supporters, to the many generous private collectors who have loaned their works for this show, and to all of the public collections who have also generously loaned their work. This exhibition would not have been possible without you. Without further ado, I'm happy to hand over to Dr. Alison Thompson for tonight's featured address. Thank you all again.